Good morning. Welcome to Maple Grove Baptist Church on Easter Sunday. It's good to see everybody wearing their Easter clothes and all smiling faces this morning. Here to celebrate a empty tomb and a risen Savior. So uh, we'll get started with a couple announcements this morning. Um, still got calendars for sale back there for ten dollars a piece. Um, you can get with Stephanie or Chris, and he'll get you hooked up with a calendar. Um, there's going to be no services tonight. Uh, spend some time with your families and enjoy this Easter Sunday. So um, April 6th, the Super Singles will meet at Cheddar's at 3. I think I said 3.30 last week, but it is at 3 o'clock. So uh, if you're interested in that, it's going to be April 6th at Cheddar's. Also April 6th, we've got the Ice Bears game. Uh, for the youth, and Stephanie said the youth need to be at the church at 3.30 that day if you're planning on going. So um, next Sunday, we got our Easter cantata at 10.30 a.m. Be in prayer for that. Um, I know they've been working real hard on that, and they do have the choir practice Wednesday at 6. So uh, just be in prayer for them as they get ready to share that with us. Also next Sunday at 11.30, there is a deacons meeting. I'm guessing following the church service. Is there any other announcements that I've missed this morning? All right. Anybody got a prayer request this morning? Remember Ginger's request? Okay. Remember Lisa Cummings for those who couldn't hear. Remember this. She has really educated me and taught me a lot lately. <laughs> Larry and Nancy, yeah. Um, I know Larry's, was his sister, I believe, passed away. I remember them. Say it again. Say it again. Okay. Absolutely. Anybody else? Mike Anderson, did you leave some prayer this morning? Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the reason to celebrate this Easter Sunday. We thank you that your perfect son come and died on the cross for something that's always needed. Be with all the prayer requests heard here today. Dear Lord, you know the need. You can comfort them, Lord, and heal them, Lord, if it be your will. Father, we just pray that this service today will give you honor and glory. Be with our uh, brother Alan as he stands and preaches. You fill him up with the word. Fill this place up with your spirit, Lord. Let it touch all of our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name, I beg it all. Amen. Amen. Brother Bobby. So 
don't stand if you would. We'll sing happy birthday, and then as the choir sings it, we'll do our dinner service for you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Everyone at will come and help us in the choir. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betraying. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd mary's crying peter is denying but they don't know that sundays are coming it's friday the romans beat my jesus they robe him in scar they crown him with thorns but they don't know that sundays come it's friday See Jesus walking to Calvary, his blood dripping, his body stumbling, and his spirits burdened. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning. And evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday. But let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross. Healing forsaken by his father. Left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the earth trembles, 
the sky grows dark, my king yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won, sin has conquered, and Satan just a laugh. It's Friday. Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard, and a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a coming.
We're so thankful, Lord, that you sent your son to die for this little old me, Father. I just pray if there's one here this morning, Father, that doesn't know you, I pray that they accept you before it's eternally too late, Lord. Just knock on that heart, and I pray that they answer you. Father, just take us off and bless us and use us till the end of our kingdom. It's your precious son, Jesus Christ's name that I pray.
I'm glad he lives in my heart today. I'm thankful for that this morning. You pray for these ladies they come to sing. Does anybody else have any special music for us today that's not up here on the front? Anybody else? You pray for them as they sing, would you? the stores one and all he knows how the sand is on the shore 
he sees every sparrow that falls. Made the mountains and the seas, he's in controlling everything. Of all creatures, great and small, he knows my name. Every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry. And he knows my name, when I will well by the pain. Can't see the rod of day, I know I'll be just fine. He knows my name. questions of a lie, but I know when who I have believed. He knows my name, every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry. He knows my name, my Lord will follow pain, can't see the light. step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry, and he knows my name, I'm overwhelmed by the pain, can't see the light of day, I know I'll be just fine, he knows my name. Oceans he made were no larger than a tear. The sound of his voice made dry land appear. He sculpted the mountains with such great skill. Yet when he 
my Lord suffered for me, carried the cross all the way, my sins to atone. Then they nailed him to a cross, great was the pain and the loss, he suffered it Because he loved me, my Savior died. Oh, on the cross was crucified. No greater love by mortal man has ever been known. Oh, praise his dear name, he loved me so. Now I am here. 
that on that third and glorious day, God came and rolled the stone away. He rose from the dead because he loved me. Because he loved me, my Savior died. On the cross was crucified. No greater love by mortal man has ever been known. Oh, praise his dear name, he loved me so. Now I am his, he's mine, I know. He suffered it all because he loved me. suffered it all because he loved me. I'm thankful for that this morning. Thank you, choir, and thank you to everyone uh, for our special singing this morning. If you have your Bibles and you want to follow along with us this morning, we'll be in Colossians chapter 2 this morning, Colossians chapter number 2. So if you will stand, and I'll give you a moment to get turned uh, to the Word of God, Colossians chapter 2. Again, it's good to be here today. It's good to see each and uh, every one that's here. Glad you've come to be with us here this morning. Uh, we said earlier this morning in our uh, sunrise service is that this is a day of celebration. Um, you know, this is, to me, the greatest day that mankind has ever experienced. It's a day that we can celebrate uh, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Uh, Colossians chapter 2, and we want to start reading here in verse number 9. Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead, and ye, and you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and to take it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer this morning, giving you praise and thanks, God. Thanking you, Lord, for this wonderful, uh, just wonderful and blessed day that you've given us here today. Thankful, God, for all of those that have gathered in here today to come and to worship uh, this wonderful day, God, that we can celebrate and worship and thank you for sending your Son to die on a cross for our sins uh, so that he would give his life, he would shed his blood, and Lord, he would lay down his body, his life, and he would take it again on the third and appointed day. Lord, we pray today that if there's anyone here today that doesn't know you uh, as their personal Savior, God, we pray that this would be that day that you would speak to their heart, that the words, uh, uh, the message, the scripture, God would speak to them and show them, God, the need 
of salvation. Lord, as we pray today, we pray for those who are unable to be here. We have many that are sick and unable to attend. God, we just ask that you bless them and help them. And Lord, we just want to praise your holy name today. We're so thankful, God, to be called Christians today. And Lord, we are so thankful for the resurrection. Lord, we thank you once again for all the things that you've done and all the things you will continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to start out by saying this. Uh, when you read in uh, the Gospels and you read about uh, the situation of where they were coming to the cross and uh, they were coming, Mary was coming early in the morning, she was coming to anoint uh, the Lord's body. If we could somehow bring her here, uh, there's several things that she could testify of. First of all, uh, she would say that she heard the mob cry out, uh, crucify uh, him. She would attest this morning that uh, she seen the, the whippings. Uh, uh, she seen the crucifixion. Uh, she seen the sufferings uh, uh, that Jesus suffered for you and I this morning. She would uh, tell us of how they mocked him and how they abused him. Uh, she would tell you this morning that uh, she could she could say that she saw him give his last breath. Uh, uh, she would say this morning that she was there and saw when they pierced his side. Uh, and th th she could also say this morning that she was there when they took his lifeless body off of the cross. Uh, uh, may, may even perhaps might say that uh, she was there that when they put his body in the tomb uh, and when they rolled the stone uh, and put it in place uh, and sealed that tomb. Uh, but you know, three days later, she could also tell you today uh, that when she got to the tomb that early morning, uh, that stone was rolled away uh, and and the body of Jesus was not in there. Uh, uh, so she could tell all of those things uh, uh, that she had seen, uh, the things that she experienced, uh, things that she saw with her very own eyes this morning uh, that she could tell you about. Uh, but you know, one thing that I've come to realize uh, in studying and praying and preparing for this day, uh, uh, not only... Uh, uh, did Mary witness those things? Uh, but do you know, as a Christian today, uh, uh, we are part of the death, uh, and the burial, and the resurrection. You say, Pastor, uh, how is that? Well, first of all, let's look in verse 13 and notice what the Bible says. Out of Colossians chapter 2, it says this. It says you. Uh, you say, Pastor, who is you this morning? It is you and me. Amen. Uh, it said being dead uh, in your sins and, and, your, and the uncircumcision of your flesh. Uh, now, I want to stop right there for just a moment. Uh, uh, notice that the, the Apostle Paul uh, is writing to the Christians of Colossians. Uh, and you say, Pastor, why was he writing to them? Uh, it's because uh, a certain sect was coming in and telling them uh, that not only did they have to be born again, uh, but they had to be circumcised. Uh, and Paul is telling them that you do not need uh, the circumcision that's made with hands, uh, uh, but the circumcision of the Spirit which is Jesus Christ. Uh, and notice this. Uh, he's telling them that you being dead in your sins. Uh, you say, Pastor, how is that? First of all, uh, we're going to cover two things this morning. Uh, when Adam sinned uh, in the Garden of Eden, uh, uh, death was pronounced upon everyone. Uh, and so each and every one of us this morning, uh, we are born 
born into sin. It is our nature today to sin. Ain't it amazing that we do not have to teach ourselves to be bad? It comes naturally. We have to teach ourselves to be good. But notice this. So being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh. Now notice this next part. It said, hath he quickened. Now notice this. Hath he quickened. Notice, say, Pastor, who done the quickening? Jesus Christ. And you say, what does that word quickened mean? It means to make alive. Now listen, think about this. Before a person can ever be alive in the Lord Jesus Christ, they have to be dead. You say, Pastor, that's crazy talk. I don't understand what you mean. Hey, listen, when we're born in this life, even though the there's breath in the body, uh, even though this heart beats with inside of us, uh, we are dead in our trespasses and sins. Uh, and notice this, uh, he goes on to say, uh, uh, together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Uh, now listen, uh, if Jesus came uh, and died and was buried uh, and arose again, guess what? Uh, he came alive. And through that resurrection power, guess what? We are made alive this morning through Jesus Christ. Now you say, Pastor, what is a trespass? I'm glad you asked this morning. A trespass is when you cross the line and you've broken the law. Now guess what? Every person today is guilty of trespasses. And you say, Pastor, uh, who are we trespassing against? Uh, we're trespassing against God. Uh, now listen. Notice is um, when those trespasses are forgiven, uh, uh, they are forgiven. This next part, uh, I don't know about you. Uh, I don't need any help being bad. Uh, I do a pretty good job of it myself, all right? Uh, but I've done enough wrong in my life uh, that guess what? Uh, through my sins, uh, I am the one that should have died. Uh, but Jesus loved me enough uh, that he was willing to... To sacrifice his life. Uh, see, Jesus had no sin. Uh, uh, Jesus was the perfect Lamb of God. Uh, he fulfilled uh, the sacrifice. Now, in verse 14, notice he is uh, blotting out uh, the handwriting of ordinances. Uh, now, let me read that again. Uh, uh, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances. Uh, you know today uh, that if you've gotten trouble with the law. Uh, uh, maybe you've got a speeding ticket. Uh, or maybe you've been in trouble with the county police. Uh, or even the city police. Uh, do you know that you've got a record? Uh, do you know if they run uh, your name in a database? Uh, it'll pull up all of your uh, records, the accounts of where you've transgressed uh, the, the law of man. Uh, where you've broken the records within our county. Uh, but you know this, uh, that there there are times uh, that a president gives what they call a presidential pardon. Uh, and what that means is, is uh, no matter what the crime was, uh, uh, they can pardon you of that crime. Uh, but here's the interesting part. Uh, they may pardon you of the crime, uh, but they cannot delete the record. Amen. Uh, it's, it's there permanently. Uh, but listen, when Jesus Christ uh, uh, died on the cross um, and arose on the third day um, and when we have accepted him as our Lord and Savior guess what uh, the Bible says uh, blotted out the handwriting of ordinances uh, you say pastor uh, what is an ordinance uh, it's a judgment or sentence amen uh, hey listen a person today uh, if they die without Jesus uh, they will die and go to hell uh, 
um, and you know what you say pastor um, uh, that's awful strong talk this morning um, hey listen that ain't my words um, that's God's word amen um, uh, dying without Jesus uh, a person will die and go to hell um, you say pastor then how in the world um, uh, can we get um, our sins forgiven um, it's so simple today um, even a little bitty boy um, uh, can come um, uh, just like he did a few weeks ago um, and ask Jesus in his heart um, and ask him to forgive him um, and he's born again amen um, you say pastor uh, what happened when that happened there was a transaction that took place. Uh, and you say, what was it? Uh, uh, Jesus took his sin and gave him a new life. Uh, and not only did he give him a transaction, uh, but he gave him a record. Uh, I'm not talking a bad record. Uh, I mean a good record this morning. Uh, you say, Pastor, what record is that? Uh, it's his name written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Uh, hey, that's a real book this morning. Uh, now notice this. Uh, the Bible says that was against us. Uh, hey, listen. Uh, I don't like being against anybody uh, and I don't want nobody against me. Uh, but the sin that's in our lives uh, is against us uh, and it drives a wedge between us and God. Uh, but notice God is the one uh, that gave uh, uh, the cure for sin. Uh, let me put it to you this way. Uh, if someone is sick, uh, guess what they need? They need a doctor. Uh, if someone uh, that needs money, they go to the bank. Uh, uh, someone that's hungry, uh, they go and buy food. Uh, uh, somebody that's thirsty, uh, uh, they go to the water fountain. Uh, a person this morning that is dead uh, uh, goes to the Savior. Savior, amen. Uh, and you say, Pastor, uh, but I've got a heartbeat. Uh, I've got a pulse. Uh, I've got breath going in and out of my body. Uh, listen, without Jesus this morning, you are dead in your sins. But guess what? There's a cure. You know what? We just came through uh, COVID just a few years ago. And you say, Pastor, what were they trying to do? They were trying to find a cure. They were trying to find something to help. Um, hey, listen. Um, uh, God settled it with Jesus Christ. Uh, one thing I want to say to you. You say, Pastor, what did the resurrection bring us? Uh, uh, first of all, it brought us life um, uh, when Jesus was raised from the dead. Um, it brought us an eternal life into heaven. Uh, it brought us the forgiveness of sins. Uh, and I like this next part. Uh, it took away the sting of death. Uh, you know what people get afraid of today? Uh, they're afraid of dying. Uh, you know why they're afraid of dying? Uh, because they don't know what's next. Uh, they don't know where they're going. Uh, hey listen, I settled that argument a long time ago. Uh, my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Uh, I don't fear death uh, because I know when this body uh, uh, takes its last breath uh, don't you cry over me because guess what uh, I'll be with Jesus amen that's my victory I was thinking about you know we get excited about these ball teams that win we get excited about that perfect season. Uh, why not get excited uh, about the victory that Jesus gave us? Uh, hey, we'll go over to UT Stadium uh, and we'll shout the walls down uh, over some boy uh, uh, running 10 yards with a football. Uh, you know what? That doesn't do anything for us physically. Uh, it doesn't do anything for us spiritually. Uh, but when Jesus came out of the grave, amen, uh, it settled a lot of things. Next thing it done, through Jesus Christ, remember I said that because of Adam's sin, it was um, imputed to us sin in our lives, born as sinners. But because of Christ, it has imputed to us righteousness. The Bible describes our righteousness as of filthy rags in the Old Testament. Say, Pastor, what does that mean? That means that any good that we could ever do, 
Anything that we could ever give. Anything that we could ever say. Anything that we could attain or have on our own is nothing but worthless rags that you simply throw away because they have no value. They have no use. But with the blood of Christ in our hearts and lives today, we have attained righteousness not because of what we've done, but what because He's done. Amen. With Adam's sin, it brought death to man. But through Christ's sinless life, it brought life unto those that have put their faith and trust in them. You know, you say, Pastor... It's been a long time since I've really felt the presence of God. You know what? You can feel Him today. Amen. I think it started this morning. No, actually, I think it started on Friday. All right. Thinking about what the Lord uh, went through for you and I. The sufferings, the beatings, uh, uh, the bloodshed, uh, uh, being hung on a cross. Uh, you know one thing that I, it's hard for me to understand is that as they nailed uh, uh, those spikes in his arms, his hands, uh, and they nailed his feet uh, uh, to the cross, uh, the Bible says he opened a naughty's mouth. Uh, now I want you to think about that. Uh, he opened a knot his mouth you know what we go to the doctor sometime huh? and you know what we get scared of uh, brother Bobby we get scared of that little bitty old needle in there and we tense up because that doctor uh, is going to stick us with that needle uh, you know sometimes I'm alright with it uh, but sometimes it hurts uh, and I say man it hurt uh, don't do that but listen uh, when they drove the spikes uh, his love was so great uh, that he didn't say a word. Uh, now I want you to think about that today. Uh, if we took you and laid you down, uh, first of all, if I told you I was going to drive spikes in you, uh, you'd take off running. Amen. Uh, Jesus didn't run. Uh, hey, listen, when they come to arrest him, uh, they brought an army. Uh, they didn't know who they were arresting uh, because Jesus knew he had to die for our sins. We are dead in our sins. And through Jesus, He hath quickened us together with Him, having forgiven you all trespasses. We are a part of the resurrection. Turn with me, if you will, to 1 Corinthians 15, verses 22. For as in Adam... All die because of sin. Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. Because of Adam, all die. But because of Christ, all are made alive. Brother Bobby, did you come get us a song this morning? Let's stand for just a moment as we give a song of invitation. You know what? I can, I can honestly tell you with all the assurance I have in this life, my debt's been settled. Sin, had, My sin debt has been paid, not because of being a preacher, not because of being a pastor, but because of what Christ has done for me. The Bible says in the last part of verse 14, and it says, took it out of the way, nailing it to His cross. Only Jesus could do what Jesus done and has to die and to pay our sin debt. As we sing, Brother Bobby.
verse 12, say, Pastor, how do you get saved? It's by faith. Pastor, how do you live after you're born again? By faith. Say, Pastor, how are you going to die? By faith. But you know what? When I get there, my faith will end in sight. One of my favorite songs is Beulah Land, and part of the one parts of that verse it says, "My faith will end in sight." I believe the Lord today. I believe in God with all of my heart. I believe this Bible from cover to cover. Um, I think Billy Graham said this. He said, "I even believe the cover because it says Holy Bible." <laughs> I'm thankful today for what this represents. You know, this is not just about the Easter Bunny. It's not about Easter eggs. It's not about family. It's about a risen Savior. Amen. Thankful to see everybody here today. It's good to be in the Lord's house. And, uh, if you don't have a church you're regularly attending, and if you're visiting with us today, we'd love to have you here. What you see is what you get. This is how we are Every time we come to church, except we're a little bit more dressed up today, I'd have to say that. Uh, some guys have got ties on that don't normally have ties, and some of the ladies have got hats on that normally don't have hats, and uh, some new dresses floating around, but that's all right. It ain't, what, it ain't on the outside that matters, it's what's on the inside, amen? So it's good to be here today. Uh, no service tonight. You go home, spend time with your family and your loved ones. And let me say this, don't forget that this is a day of celebration. Amen. Brother Richie, would you dismiss us, please? Dear Heavenly Father, God, I thank you, Lord, for this time to come back down to your house, God, to worship you here, Heavenly Father. I thank you most of all today, God, for your son, Jesus Christ, who hung and died on a cross for every one of our sins, dear God. I thank you, Lord, that on the third day he arose victorious over that grave. Paving the way for salvation for each and every one of us. Pray, God, if there's one here that don't know you, Lord, that they take advantage of this time, God, to come to know you through pardon of sins and your saving grace, your Son, Jesus Christ. Be with each and every one of us as we go our ways now, Lord. Lead, guide, and direct us. Forgive us of our sins and where we fail. In the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray.